the suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Please! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Stone the Petite. We've got our guest interview of the week. Um, before we introduce Lily Waters to the crowd, Walters to the crowd, we want to give a quick shout out to our friends over at Ricky Seltzer's, the seltzer of the season. I don't drink and drive, but if I would, it would be with Ricky. It's the best seltzer in the land. You can get them from Mr. B's. You can get them across the metro. They, ha- they pack a punch, 7% alcohol. Tw- every 12 pack has a full fifth of hooch in them. They have new flavors dropping all the time, both in the tequila and the vodka. I thoroughly recommend y'all give them a whirl. Oh, that was a mouthful. Chris, how are you, brother? I'm doing fantastic. The week is almost over, and we've got an awesome guest today. Yeah, my parents are coming to town, for those that are listening. So if y'all see Papa Wilson or Mama Bear Wilson, there's even Baby Wilson will be in town. So it's going to be a doozy this weekend. But there's a lot of cool stuff going in the Metro, so you should be very excited. Alabama football has a little bit of hope left in those, uh, those I guess, pipes and dreams. Um, Eve, how are you, sister? I'm fabulous, Kip. How are you? I am hungover as shit, but that's the story of my life. I feel like that's yeah. every day of the week these days. Okay. You want to do our intro? and Let's get into our interview of the day. Yeah, yeah. So I was lucky enough to sit down with Lily a few weeks ago to talk about this exciting new project that's coming to Denver. They kind of opened already, but now we're about to have the official like food launch fully opening. Is that right? But anyways, so Lily Walters is like, I don't know, the do it of all the food park. She's done everything, got it all organized, did the space. It's awesome. So, hey, Lily. Hey. <laughs> I think I think I probably messed up there on the whole description. So yeah, let's fuck that up. Yeah, let's have you give us a description of what we're talking about today and what's going on with this big project. No, that was kind of fun. I liked that. Uh, but basically, I am helping build out Denver's first food truck park. So we launched a coffee shop in the inside of the space, tried to drum up some foot traffic, get people going. It's in the Sloan's Lake area off of Colfax and Raleigh. Um, So there's a coffee shop in the inside. And then we're launching all of the food trucks on 11-11. So hoping to have two to three permanent vendors, three rotating vendors, meals at any point in the day. Uh, Lots of events at the space. We're turning a 40-foot bus from the 1940s into a bar. So that's coming soon. But yeah, all the things. Yeah, all so- the things. Chris, you totally <laughs> fucked that intro up. She just did it so much more eloquently. Well, um, I would hope so. She's in charge of the whole damn thing. I don't know. Well, Words so- kind of come out of my mouth. I don't usually think it just kind of happens. So it could you, they could be right. equal. Hey, I know that feeling oh too well. That's what this podcast is pretty much all about. Um, well, Lily, I have a quick question. Are you a, from Colorado or did you come here by way of somewhere per, perhaps in the Pacific Northwest? Because it sounds like you're like creating this concept, which I've seen very regularly popular in places like Portland and the, that kind of area of the country. But are, are you a Colorado, I guess, local native transplant? I lived in Colorado since I was eight, but we're definitely pulling the inspiration from Portland, pulling it from Austin to try to make something like that happen in Denver. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I was I was getting that vibe when she was like, oh, coffee shop on the inside, flipping a bus and turning it into a bar, which love that. And then also with the the fixed locations and the rotating ones, I think that's a genius concept so that some options don't say stale, but you know, the best ones stick around. It's very much like a playoff mentality. 
Um, so let's talk a little bit about it. How did you find your way into the food scene? Did you just recognize that we needed these kind of concepts or do you have a history of working on the wheels as they say? No one says that. Oh no, I've, I've never done anything like this before in my entire life. And most of the time <laughs> I still don't know what I'm doing, but we're trying. Um, but my boss has owned this space since 2017 and it was a lot of things, uh, but mostly it's been pretty empty and the spot itself just has a ton of lot area. So we were trying to think about how to activate all of the lots while still creating this like cute little cozy communal area in the middle. And we figured food truck parks. I feel like personally Sloan's like is kind of a food desert and there's so much, so many people over there that work and go for walks. And it just felt like a good way to activate it while also giving local businesses the opportunity to showcase their food and have a permanent location without having a brick and mortar. I mean, that shot's fired at the tap and burger over there, but at the same time, you're not wrong. It is. It's kind of like, but West Colfax is seeing a resurgence, you know, with coffee shops and bars like Pony or Side Pony kind of right down the street from you. We're seeing kind of a, I don't know, it's coming back to life, so to speak. It's not, you know, it used to be kind of a little bit kind of touch and go. I used to sell guns right outside of that Sheridan um, in Colfax. It's a sticky situation, but it has kind of shifted. And so like, Colorado seems to have embraced the the food truck community, especially right there along Federal. Um, what kind of food can we expect when we uh, start talking food truck parks? Are we looking for variety? Are we looking for the absolute best? How, how does it come ab- about? Definitely all things. Definitely variety, trying to keep it so you always are getting something new. Um, as, as of people that are interested in joining the park full time, we are going to have a Thai place a breakfast burrito place, and then a few little secrets in the works that'll be launched on 11-11. So you'll oh, have to we love secrets. I love that you're embracing the all hours of the day because obviously food trucks are quite popular during the daytime. You see a lot of folks lining up for them at lunch, but you've created this concept where you're bringing in a breakfast burrito truck as well so that you can kind of keep that flow going throughout the afternoon. Will it be an in-house bar? Do you need like drink testers like how how does it go about like what are we expecting from them actually the fun thing is right now since we don't have a liquor license we do have the availability to be byob so we are throwing lots of parties that involve like bringing your own alcohol like we're starting a byo bingo so we'll have the bingo you can bring your own drinks but until we get the bar going yeah you can bring it yourself okay so when it comes to varietals, are you channeling food that you like, that your boss is the landlord? You know, it's always important to keep the landlords happy, Eve, smoking inside. Um, what's it called? How are we going about this? Are we trying to keep an open mind, like, for the vegan community that, you know, there's a, a staunch amount of them? Are we going to have a little bit of variety in that aspect? Yeah, I am definitely trying to make sure that everybody can eat, that there's always an option for somebody with a dietary restriction while also keeping in mind highlighting local businesses that are more unique. Like we've had a Haitian lady pop up a few times and she's had, I've never had Haitian food before. It's so delicious. So trying to get some of that comfort that we all know and love while also bringing in things that are unique that we've never tried before. This, I'm about this, that. You can go around the world type vibes, Chris. Yeah. 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 This sounds awesome. So what, uh, like on the 1111, what time is the party getting started and what can people expect like going on? So Moonflower is the coffee shop and they open every day at 8 a.m. And then on the weekends, they'll be open until four. So they'll be open then. So we'll have food there as early as 8 a.m., some breakfast people, And then most of the trucks are probably going to come around noon. Um, We have Thai food, Turkish food, breakfast food, Haitian food, and then some kind of soul food happening that day. So I don't know if you know this from looking at me. I have a lot of soul, but I've also been on a huge Turkish kick recently. It could have been my travels. A lot of people have heard about it to East or West Germany. Not a big deal. Kind of a cultural guy. It's fucking immaculate. It's, I mean, like street meats, these quesadillas with like seven different types of cheeses and black sesame. Oh my God, I'm giddy as a schoolgirl. And of course, I love soul food, like quite literally collard greens and ham hocks. 
all day. Oh, it's like you're throwing a party for me. My birthday. I know. Well, you'll have to come by. Oh, I'll be there with bells on. Um, and it's family friendly. Obviously, you know, you mentioned BYOB, so you can swing by Mr. B's, grab a wine bottle. Is there a court fee? Or am I allowed to bring my snot nosed kids if I have them? Things like that. Bring your kids, bring your dogs. Dogs are allowed inside the space too. Ooh. Uh, yeah, go do a little lap around Sloan's Lake, come back, try more food, you know, like walk it off, come back, do it again, come back. I'm not going to do that. Well, <laughs> not gonna, I'm not doing physical activity. That's Tim's not, not a big walker. He just does the curls. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's I, row, I row the erg as well. You know, it, it's, it's an easy workout. Um, it keeps the boyish figure. I love it. So dogs are welcome. Kids are welcome. 11 11 the, the doors are finally open to the park it's at that are colfax and raleigh before we dive into some personal questions because i know you're really excited to talk tasks and see them on your shirt um give everyone a quick rundown how they can find out more information whether it be through social media if you have a website where folks can see what it's on the menu so to speak and then we're going to talk traveling Definitely social media. That is where I am posting everything, all of the events that we'll be having, all the collaborations we're doing, all the pop-ups. There is a website. If anybody is interested in joining the park, it's just fulltankfoodpark.com. We are always looking for new vendors, but mostly social media because I get overwhelmed by having to be on a lot of platforms. Yeah. Understand. We get that. Understand completely. And one real quick question, since we're kind of like heading into uh, winter now, what's what's it going to be like at the park? Are you guys going to have heaters and stuff like that? Or how are we going to how are we going to be going there during the winter time? Yeah, we are installing the I have absolutely no idea what they're called, but like the plastic siding walls that are on like bars and things, uh, but getting heaters trapping in that center area. So you can still sit outside, still access the food trucks, as well as the inside of the space will be open too. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And really, Chris, you know, I think we've talked about it with someone in the past. It's fucking Colorado. Like, put your jacket on, grab a fancy scarf or a puffy sweater, and get your ass out there and support some local business. Rain Bring your own shine. Baileys. Bring your own Baileys. Get a coffee. There you go. Hell yeah. Well, the, uh, so we, I'm not going to ask questions that maybe have like long data, but it sounds like at least for the next foreseeable future, a couple of weeks or months, it will be BYOB. So Mr. B's is definitely the stop on your way to the food truck park. Okay. Let's dive into personal stuff with Lily, shall we? Yeah. She said she wants to get really personal. So I know right now you're on the road and traveling yourself, um, but you mentioned that y'all are taking inspiration from places like Portland. We don't like to give credit to any part of Texas, much less Austin. But at the same time, if, you know, rainy streets of vibe. How much fun was that? Where you're like, oh, I got to go research, smoke pot and eat food in the, in the lush Northwest. Yeah, amazing. I love it. I love food. I think about it probably more often than I should. That's mostly what all of my thoughts are consumed by. So I was like, how can I have the most food at one time in one place? And that's really where it all started fucking love this this you are us we are the same (laughs) yeah in mexico right now i'm like okay i'm with a group of people and i'm like we all get one meal at each place and we all share it and then we go to like 14 different places and they're like no why leave them i don't leave them abandon them (laughs) imagine being friends with people that don't share that sucks i know have you gone to contramar since you've gotten down there this time around Yes, uh, we went there last night. It, I have never had fish that good. Like, actually changed my life. Maybe we need to figure out how to get them into a food truck and bring them to Denver. I'll go talk to you them know, just tomorrow. The, yeah. the second location, they're like, oh yeah, we have Mexico City, and then we have Colfax on in Colorado. And they're like, interesting. Well, I don't hate that, but okay. Yeah. Feels <laughs> like a good transition. Yeah, you can get you can get really fresh seafood here in Colorado. So come on, just yeah, bring it to the restaurant. Uh, Look at Mexico City is in the landlocked as well. It's not like they're hanging out on the shores. No, but yeah, very true, true. But it's a little bit different. Yeah, same, same, but different. Um, What's your favorite city to visit for food purposes? Oh, that's a loaded question. Sorry, Um, we sometimes ask hard questions. 
That is a hard question. You know, I'll take that over something more serious. Honestly, probably here, the amount of food and diversity in every single meal that I've had has been stellar. I love what it. about you? I mean, Mexico City's up there. Paris is wonderful. Barcelona is cool. Um, Do you speak Spanish? Have you? No, <laughs> fuck no. If I, had, <laughs> if, I, if I was stateside, New Orleans is my 1A. It's the best food in the country. And I'll fight anybody that says otherwise. Chicago has been told, as I've been told, Chicago is number one. But Chicago is literally just a northern variation of southern folks. Everyone just came up the river or I-55. So those are kind of the, the, the one-two punch. I know Chris will say New York. No, I mean, I got I mean, I agree with you on the New Orleans thing. I mean, the food down oh, there so is good. just so good, no matter how you slice and it. And healthy. It's healthy. And the thing is, is like you can't get that food anywhere else, which makes it special. I would say after that, New York has to be number two. It's good. Uh, it's just there's just such good food and they have some shit you can't get anywhere else. But it's not as like it's not as uh, glorifying as uh, New Orleans cuisine. Um, Lily, we told you that we would get you out of here so you can catch happy hour. I'm pretty sure it's central time. So it's 420 and 420 reminds me that everyone needs to stop into Starbucks in November. If you shop at a Starbucks or an Emerald Fields twice in one week, any week from now through Christmas, you'll automatically be entered to win a gift card to the grocery store. We're trying to put money back in people's pockets this holiday season so that you can have that go that extra mile at Thanksgiving. You can splurge on that PS5 for your kids for Christmas because we're taking care of the groceries. All you have to do is be a loyalty member and shop with any Starbucks, any Emerald Fields, any standing akimbo twice in one week and you're automatically fucking entered. No minimum required. All you have to do is support local. Okay. Chris, you want to do some personal, personal questions? Yeah. Before we let you go, here's one question due to the upcoming holiday season. What is your go-to Thanksgiving side? Um, my Wow. My first instinct is very depressing. And I was going to say bread. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, that's actually totally justifiable. We fucked that's kind of where my mind went. Like, I love a carb. Okay. I think we're best friend. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stick with bread, honestly. That's kind of, you know, that feels good in my soul. I mean, those little Parker house rolls, like on Thanksgiving, those slap. And we're big fans of Sister Schubert's. Shout out to those frozen delicacies. What's also yeast rolls when they grow so big yes. throughout the morning and then you cook them. It's like Texas Roadhouse. Shout out to Aaron. They're fucking immaculate. All the breads. Shout out okay, to well, also our friends over at Get Rights because they're yeah. providing the bread for our friends for our friends giving if you're back in the country you need to come party with us we have a lot of fun and the studio is not too terribly far from the food truck park lots we'll be of there work. but what are your thoughts on pie that's a very contentious conversation that chris and i yell at each other every holiday season so we both come from the south so it's pecan is usually 1a what about you yeah I, i'm familiar with pecan pie personally um but <laughs> Ooh, gross is that like english peas and then like just jars uh -huh. in the in a pie that sounds yeah, totally yeah, gross yeah <laughs> yeah tin foil aluminum yeah uh i like a pie i like a pie i like an apple pumpkin an apple pie. Pie. i'm anti-sweet potato i don't i don't do a sweet potato pie that's weird what about pumpkin yeah okay yeah. Yeah. So do you have a total pie. aversion to sweet potatoes? Like sweet potato casserole with marshmallows also has no place on the plate? Yeah, that just feels weird to me. Why are we doing that? Mm. Personally. I mean, the, the normal mash, the normal potato is so fucking good. There's no reason to have a sweet. I stand with you on that wall. I like I like a sweet potato, but when you put the sugar and the marshmallows and then I just, that's too far. Well, no so judgment. I'll bring, I'll bring a pumpkin pie. For Friendsgiving. Okay. That sounds good with us. Are you a good cook? Do you, is that how you fell in love with food at an early age? Or was it tra your travels and eating other people's dankness that made you have this I love for bread? Love, I love to cook for other people. I don't love to cook for myself. I will eat the most boring, sad dish for myself, but like show love in feeding others. So then when I'm hungry, I more often than not go out to eat. 
So oh, shit. that's fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, that's cleaning up is a bitch after cooking that, for yourself. That brings us to the next question. Where where was your last best meal in Denver at? Greenwich. Whoa, really? Those Whoa. pies are pretty damn good. I'm not gonna lie. It's a fun atmosphere. That was probably, yeah, the one last where I was like, okay, that was good. What kind of what kind of pie did you get? I don't remember. No, no. Which I guess defeats the whole purpose. And that <laughs> maybe I'm lying, but it was really good. <laughs> I don't even remember Tuesday's episode, so f- fret not. Memory is no, not still, a strong suit for this podcast. Contramore is still in the mind. I can't get that off, you know? Yeah, I don't fair, I'm not actually, I've been thinking about it for like the last 20 minutes. I don't even know what else we talked about. <laughs> okay, so may, let, me, let me give you a suggestion. If y'all are looking to go to a really fun cocktail bar down there, check Everybody out. Everybody loves unsolicited advice. Check out, <laughs> check out Hanky Panky. It's, it's super fun. Look it up. It's like a cozy little spot. Uh, the beverages are the tits. We love that. Yeah. Um, well, Lily, thank you so much for taking the time to goof off with us. One more time before we go, let everybody know how they can follow you on social media. What's your email address so they can bombard you with contact or emails and then website. So if they want to check out trucks and things of that nature. Yeah, so Full Tank Food Park on Instagram, fulltankfoodpark.com. You can email me at info at fulltankfoodpark.com. Keeping it nice and easy. Tell me all of the soup recommendations, please. Oh, that's actually a good call. I mean, most of them are like pho and ramen based, you know, and you'll get a lot of South Federal, Fadoy, Pho 95. But y'all send Lily everything y'all know about the soup scene in Colorado. Bombarder mm-hmm. with messages. If we got a soup truck, just saying, even if it was just like a winter month, there was maybe one truck that just hammered out dank ass loaded potatoes, maybe some broccoli cheese, the occasional crab corn bisque. If you're a soup truck. Bang my line. Lily, thank you so much again. Y'all opens on 1111 on the corner of Raleigh and Colfax. A welcomed addition to the Sloan's Lake neighborhood and family right down the street from EZ Pond, if I recall correctly. Um, <laughs> yeah. to, I know that area. Um, we, Sam got jumped right there, Chris. Remember? Yeah. At the yeah, Sheridan a, it, it used to be a rough area, but now it's getting, it's getting cleaned oh, yeah, up. This was like yeah. 10 years ago, but yeah. whatever. Um, it's definitely a nice area. Cat swing through before you go to Alamo Draft House and go to catch a movie. That's how you do it. Maybe you worked out hard at whatever duality. You earned that pastry and coffee. So swing on through corner of Raleigh and Colfax. You'll check it out. Full tank food park. Thank you so much, Lily. Until next week, stay high, stay hungry. Visit a food park. Eat some soup. Cheers. Cheers. (laughs) Way to go, Eve.